Michael with Juggernaut Weld Fab. Today we are going to be, oops, sorry, I got my light right in your face. Uh, today we are going to be changing, changing out the tranny cooler lines on this 2015 F550 600 power stroke. Now, I noticed I had a leak coming down and it was, uh, I noticed it because I could hear a squeaking noise when I would turn. So I got underneath the truck and there was fluid dripping down off of the steering stabilizer um, shock. And uh, anyway, I knew it wasn't coming from the stabilizer, obviously. So I looked up above it and the tranny cooler line was dripping. Um, and it is a son of a bitch to change these tranny cooler lines. Apparently you've got to pull the motor. Um, I took it all apart. It takes a special little uh, uh, like fuel line disconnect tool for the lines up on the cooler itself. We'll, uh, I'll show you what that tool looks like here in a minute. But uh, what I decided to do was ditch those factory lines. I'll probably leave them hooked up there. Um, but I'm going to disconnect them from the side of the transmission. I found a performance place that sells a uh, transmission adapter for this transmission. And it's going to adapt that fitting to be able to use braided lines and fittings versus these hard lines. So I'm going to run braided hose. I'm going to run that adapter run dash eight braided hose up to an external training cooler and we'll put it right up here in the front of the grill uh, or in the front of the bumper and we'll make a custom bracket if we need to so stay tuned okay this is what uh, we're going to end up using this is the adapter that's made for it uh, on the factory side i'll show you on the transmission side but it's just two hard lines with these fittings these boss o-ring or not boss o-ring but these o-ring fittings pressed in and a single 10 millimeter bolt holding that in and then we've got 20 foot of dash 8 an braided line we've got some fittings these are straight fittings these are 90s these are 45s and these are 180s We'll just see what we're gonna need um, for it. And this is our cooler. So this is a two row. It's pretty similar to the size that's on there from the factory, um, except this one's gonna be catching the cool air versus the, like the factory one, it, it has coolant running through it at all times. So however hot your engine is is however hot your fluid is and it's not going to get much cooler than that so here's our the special little tool i was telling you about for removing that tranny cooler line from the transmission cooler up front uh, this one i got from o'reilly i believe and they sell them as a fuel line disconnect tool this is my handy dandy little trim clip tool. I use this thing for everything. It works great as a pry bar. So that's what we're gonna use to remove the old lines. We'll take our 10 millimeter out and it'll take just a little bit of force to pry that and pop them out of the transmission. And again, like I said, it's just got one 10 millimeter bolt holding that on. So let's get to it, shall we? Like I said, or you can, if you've got a fancy disconnect kit, you can check and see if you have something that works, but not a single one of those would work. So I just went and bought this cheap one. Um, it comes with a set of two, actually. It comes with a set of two, and uh, this was the correct one for it. Okay, so for this part, you're going to need a five-gallon bucket. Um, I've got a five-gallon bucket sitting here, and these are the lines. These are the tranny cooler lines. Like I said, we'll take that 10 millimeter bolt off of there, bolt out of there, and then just wiggle back and forth, kind of pry against these lines and wiggle back and forth and they'll pop out. And I'm gonna drain those lines and the trans cooler. Um, I drained the transmission last time and uh, put all new fluid in it. So I'm gonna try to uh, 
keep the fluid because at 12, 13 bucks a quart, um, that stuff's not cheap. And like I said, I just uh, tried this last week and found that you have to pull the engine in order to get this off, so. Okay, you can see we've got our fitting in place up there. What I would highly recommend is taking a little bit of red grease or, or something even some of the, your old trans fluid and wiping it around the o-rings on those fittings before you push them in there to make sure that they don't get ripped um, and then your 10 millimeter bolt goes back in there and holds that on i use some blue loctite on that just to be certain um, that it doesn't come out going down the road now we'll go ahead and start uh figuring out where we're going to run our lines. Go over how to install uh, AN fittings onto braided fuel line or oil line or trans line, whatever, whatever you're running. Do make certain that if you're running methanol that uh, the, the hose is safe with whatever fluid you're running. Uh, but these can be a bitch sometimes, okay? Sorry about my language. But uh, I found the best way to do it is wrap the hose in electrical tape, cut it off with a cutoff wheel and a grinder, and then go ahead and uh, uh, pull that tape back off of there as gentle as possible so you don't unfray everything. And then wrap one revolution of electrical tape around it. Um, and I let my tape overhang just a little bit over and tuck it so that those braided fibers can't peel back because that's the problem you're going to have. And then with these, these are Evil Energy brand, but they're all pretty close um, in design. On the back side of this nut, or the nipple, is uh, there are coarse threads on this side, okay? So what you want to do is you want to get this fitting squared up as square as possible with the end of your hose and what I like to do is apply some decent pressure and start threading that on by hand first they have a little instruction deal that you can download and it shows or they tell you to put it in the vise and then twist the hose around while you have this in the vise and it's a pain in the ass. So what I do is I try to go on hand tight or uh, by hand at first and if I can't get it seated all the way down then I'll go to the vise. But um, this is the important part as to why you only want one wrap of electrical tape because you'll be fighting and fighting and fighting it trying to get that thing to go on there with too much electrical tape. That's a common problem. So we're almost there. Keep looking through the end here and you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the hose butted all the way up to the next set of threads, which are a finer set of threads. And that is where the swivel fitting of your hose is going to screw into. And I like to take a little bit of motor oil, something, anything with lubricity. This is just some oil additive I had sitting close to me, so improvise it. So you want to take that or a little bit of red grease or whatever and you want to go ahead and get some grease on there or oil on the end of that. And another thing is to kind of wiggle it around in there and make sure that tip actually starts going into the end of the hose and isn't just hitting the end of the hose. Because as you go to tighten this fitting up, it can push that hose back out of there and it'll look like you have a seal, but you won't. And then you're gonna dump all your fuel or your trans fluid or whatever you're using this for all over the ground. So, and it's always good to double check and make sure you don't have any leaks when the installation is over. This is a, an aluminum wrench 
Um, this one's an all-star performance one, and it's made specifically for these uh, anodized aluminum hand fittings so that you don't uh, mar them all up. And I've been using these Evil Energy ones for a few years now, and um, they are really good quality for the price. You know, some of those more expensive ones like Earl's and Aeroquip, some guys swear, oh, I'll only run Earl's or I'll only run Aeroquip or whatever. Well, I'll run whatever you pay me to put on your vehicle. <laughs> I don't care. But, uh, but I've run this stuff on my personal stuff and never had an issue. So, um, if you can save some money on it, why not? So once we get that tightened all the way down, that's what you want. You should have a nice tight fit. Shouldn't be able to pull that, should not be able to pull that hose out of the back side of the fitting. That is installing an AN fitting on a braided hose. Okay, you, as you can see, I've got my adapter plate on. And I've got my lines hooked up. Now, since my downpipe is right here, I definitely want to stay very clear of those. So I angled my fittings down, and I'm going to loop my hose down and along the frame rail and up to the grill. Um, and I've also, let me climb out of here. I've also got this stuff they sell. Um, down at O'Reilly and it's a heat shield so it's DFI is the name of it but it's a heat shield and I'm gonna go ahead and velcro that around my lines up by the downpipe and then up here let's take a look I've got my lines run along the passenger side frame rail and behind the inner fender well let me show you that. I've got them tucked up there. So when I get done here, I will zip tie everything up together and keep it all nice and tight behind that fender well. I don't want anything laying on sharp edges. And I found a spot down in here where you can see those two eight millimeter screws one there and one there they're actually the exact spacing for my cooler it's going to work out perfect so that should catch a lot more air than this factory one does right here up tucked up there in the frame rail and like i said that one's got hot antifreeze running through it anyway so yeah, once I get it all fixed up, I'll show you guys. Okay, so what I did down here was there were two eight millimeter bolts that I could see through here and the body clips were on the bottom and they apparently held the little balance steel down here that was on here at one point in time. And I'm guessing the, the last shop I took it to uh, decided that they needed it worse than I did or that I didn't need it anymore. So it was never put back on there. So um, it worked out pretty perfect for this deal. Now my license plate holder, the bracket, it's got these little arrow shaped clips that hold it in from the top. And then these are just little uh, U shaped brackets that hold it in from the bottom. Well, what I'm going to do, you just squeeze these. I squeezed from the top side of the inside lip of the bumper. I just squeeze these together like that and pull down and, uh, and then do the other side and that'll allow you to move it back and forth or to, to get it out of there. So I think what I'm going to do, if I can, is I'm gonna run it over here, just pop that side into the one hole and leave the two down here and that'll allow me to offset my 
by license plate. Since in Colorado, you have to run a license plate up front. Um, that's going to allow me to offset my license plate and allow all the airflow to be able to hit this trans cooler. So uh, I didn't even have to make any brackets or anything for it. It, it actually worked out pretty good. Um, yeah, that's it. Now to get all my, uh, my hoses all tied together, the kit that I bought, the, the Evil Energy braided line kit that I bought comes with little double uh, hose clips to uh, clean and tidy things up a little bit. I think it only came with like two of them. So uh, I'll zip tie the rest of them. And like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and put some uh, heat wrap or uh, uh, heat shield um, up there near the downpipe. And yeah, we should be rocking and rolling here shortly. I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna do with the factory cooler lines. Um, I thought about cutting them off because again you have to lift the engine to get them out of there so I thought about cutting them off back there um, but I may end up just leaving them tied up right now um, while I verify that everything's going to uh, you know that I, I'm not going to have any leaks or anything drive it around for a couple of weeks and then go ahead and, and remove them um, so that I'm not up Schitt's Creek without a paddle. The other uh, trans cooler lines were just barely leaking, so I could possibly leave them up there, put some plugs in the end of, uh, uh, of them on that end, and leave them up there for an oh shit backup plan. Okay, so there's the cooler all mounted up. We are gonna go over here I'll show you the lines are all tucked away nicely I already showed you the fitting on the bottom the adapter fitting on the bottom um, so we used evil energy dash 8 an uh, fuel lines or uh, trans cooler <laughs> that they sell on Amazon. It comes in a 20, 20 foot roll with an assortment pack of fittings. That was about $90. The oil cooler itself was $100. And the fitting from Maryland Performance Products, that was the most expensive. That was 150 with shipping. Do not pay for the three-day shipping or the, the faster shipping those guys ship slow as shit um, it took a little over a week I think a week and a half to get it so um, that was with the three-day shipping don't waste your money the part itself is a hundred bucks and then I think it's 20 bucks for their standard shipping so could have saved thirty dollars but hey sometimes I'd like to have faith in Anyhow, that's it. I hope this helped you guys. I sure as hell don't want to pay to have somebody pull the motor out of this thing. I sure as hell don't want to pull the motor out of it to, just to change the transmission cooler lines. So this is a easy, I mean, somewhat economical uh, fix for it. I didn't spend too much more than the factory. I think the factory lines were $250, so I got 100 bucks more into it, and it's gonna cool more efficiently, and I saved all that money in labor. It only took me, I think, about two hours, uh, and it probably didn't have to take that long, but I'm over here trying to film and everything. So thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, it's at Juggernaut Wellfab. Subscribe to our channel. Check us out on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Facebook. That's the other one. It's at Juggernaut Wellfab. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.